But I've interviewed you a couple times before, and the one thing I realized that we never spoke about were some of the real rich, entertaining stories that you write about in the book, one of which was you got invited to go on a morale-boosting mission with Joe DiMaggio to Vietnam. I get a call from the State Department said, do you want to go to Vietnam? I said, not necessarily. <laughs> he said, well, Joe DiMaggio's going. I said, I'll go. Put me down. And uh, I spent 22 days with Joe, and we were... We, we, were, we were down where the war was going on. I mean, you know, we're not downtown Saigon. We're out in the middle of the jungle. I understand you also had the dubious honor of uh, showering Joe DiMaggio. Oh, yeah, I gave him a shower one night. What happened is uh, we're out in the middle of the jungle, and, and it's so damn hot, you can't sleep, and all you can hear is boom, 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 boom. And you, you're up on the hill, there's a valley, another hill, and you can see the, every fourth bullet out of the helicopters is a tracer. You know, we're, we're watching this war go on. And Joe wants to take a shower. I said, Joe, we're not downtown Saigon. He said, I don't give a damn. I'm Joe DiMaggio. We got to take a shower. I'm going to take a shower. And the only way you could take a shower is they had this bad, big bamboo thing. And you, there's a string here. And someone's got to get on a chair and feed the water and pull the string. And the water comes through. And I was the guy that did that for Joe DiMaggio. So I saw everything Marilyn saw. <laughs> And you told all your friends about it? I told every, every one of my friends. I said, the best way to describe Joe DiMaggio is a penis with a man hanging from it. <laughs> How did you wind up holding on to the luggage rack on a roof of a car that oh, was wait, driving did, just, 70 uh, miles an hour? Nah, on we, were going, we were only going 50. We were, we were in the town. It, it, to break the monotony, man, we used to travel. Uh, that was in Macon, uh, for the Macon Peaches. And, uh, the way we traveled is we had six guys in three different station wagons. We didn't have a bus, and we didn't fly. And j just to screw around with the guys, so I, I, and I used to sit out the back. Uh, me, and, me and Art Chansky would sit out the back with our feet like this, you know, for four or 500 miles looking at the headlights behind us. So one day we, we slowed down in this area, and I just got up, and I went over, and I, I, I got up on the, uh, the rack, and put my hand over the windshield, and scared the hell out of the driver. <laughs> Just screwing around. You also figured out a way to get uh, free long distance calls in the minor leagues. Oh, yeah. Well, period. Art Shamsky, my buddy, I mean, we, we stayed at the YMCA, and he dated this girl named Ann, who worked at uh, uh, the, telephone, tel uh, the telephone company. And she used to put us through every night the long distance calls. And he, he, he dated her. She had one tooth in her head. <laughs> but he dated her whole summer just to so get us free phone calls. Hey, because he, he took one for the team. Too, right? He took one for the team. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> when you were a manager, one of your players, Paul O'Neill, was uh, called out at first, but he. Well, was first of all, that you have to understand that Paul O'Neill was a great player. He was such a, uh, an aggressive guy. He complained about everything. I mean, it could be 3 and 0, oh, and it would be borderline, and he called a strike. He, oh. Paul, you got two left, don't worry about it. First inning, and he, he, he hits one uh, second base and backhands and throws it. He's out this far, which is not close in baseball. This is close in baseball, not this. And I don't need him kicked out of the game. I need to win the game. So I go out and I tell Tony, get him away from me. Get him away from me. And, and Jerry Crawford's umpire, Shag's son. And I looked at Jerry and I said, that was the best damn call I ever seen in my life. But you know how this guy is. He bitches at everything. And Jerry says, I know. Now get off the field. I'm going to kick your ass out of the game. I said, that's exactly what I want you to do. So he, you know, kicked me out of the game. So after the game, Larkin and O'Neill were sitting in there talking. And Paul says, Barry, he says, you know, that's the way a manager should stick up for his players like he did for me tonight. <laughs> he read that in my book and he got mad at me. <laughs> really?